In this segment, we are going to look at the G Wahine tuning and learning some vamps in this tuning. The tuning is D, G, D, F sharp, B, and D. Now, the great thing about this tuning, everything is the same as tarot patch tuning. All the vamps that we've learned all work, except we have to adjust the notes in the third string because we tune down half a step which means all the notes would go up one fret to make the, the sound of the, the notes work in the key of G. So we have to hold down our first finger on the first fret of the third string and play a G chord. Now to make a D7, you just move that first finger up to the second string, it's very easy. A common sound that we're gonna hear is a hammer-on from the open string Hammer your finger down to the first fret. Practice that. On the third string, open to first fret. We're going to do that quite a bit when we do vamps in this tuning. So let me show you some of the vamps. The first one is they're all D7 going to G. You measure each, and the first one sounds like this. Again. There's that hammer on. Find six, four, six, four, five, four, five, four. Right, we're doing D7 and G. Try to keep those bass notes very steady. It's very important you hit the right bass note to really establish what the harmony is. This tells us, that, oh, this is a G chord because I'm playing the fifth string. D chord because I'm playing that sixth string. Then we're putting the melody up above it. the beats fall, hammer on, down, up, down. When you do that hammer on, you can just leave your first finger for the rest of the measure. So just the melody goes one and two and three, four and one, two and three, four, one. Vamp of G7, 2, 3, 4, G. That's what our harmony would be. And this will be the case for all the variations that we learn. The second variation has a little pull off. Uh, the very beginning of the beat from the second fret to the high string to the open string. And then we play this tension note, the second fret of the second string, then the first. Now, a nice thing about this tuning, now we have this third fret, this note A is the third fret of the third string, and that goes nicely to a chord tone of D. So from this chord shape that we held down earlier with just the first finger, another variation to make a D chord, you can put down the third finger on the third fret of the third string. And that's what we're using here. measure of G, I'm playing upbeats, one and two, and then, then downbeats. So two upbeats, up, up, and down, down. Now let's look at the third example, very similar to this one. We're going to use that tension note. We're just not going to go to the third string, and we're going to do an extra hammer-on at the end. Go back and practice that a few more times. I want to get that under our fingers. And example three goes like this. Second fret, second finger to first, then hammer on. And you sneak it. A little hammer on right after the beat. You'll hear things like that in songs like Punahele and Weha Swing. Use that quite a bit. We'll look at those songs a little bit later.
Uh, let's look at the fourth example here. This is a lot of fun to do. We're going to do a slide from the third fret with the first finger on the second string. And I use my third finger one fret higher on the high string. So three and four, but using first and third finger. Try that. Just play those notes and slide down to one and two. Landing on a bass note with a slide, you slide down and you land on the fourth string. So you can land and practice that one and two. Practice landing with the fourth string right when you arrive. Then we're going to do another thing common in this tuning is a series of sixteenth notes: zero two zero one on the fourth string, zero two third string, zero one. Punahele again, right? He uses, he uses that phrase. Works great for a band. So practice that one, work on the slide, and then those two hammer ons. You can release your second finger as soon as you start the third string hammer on. So it's an exchange of notes. Often we leave the finger down to sustain. But because this isn't a chord tone so much for a G or D, it can be a passing tone and you can let it go. Okay, let's look at the fifth example now. And this is very close to another phrase that we've done before in tarot patch. But now we have to, as I mentioned, you have to adjust notes on the third string up one fret. So this will be the, the case here. Instead of playing all notes at the fifth fret, uh, we're going to play 6-5-5. Five, five. This would give you a C chord if you covered the five strings, but you put down your second finger on the third string, one fret higher. So that's at the sixth fret, and then bar the fifth. But in this case, we only need to bar the top two strings, and we get this. So fifth fret across the top two strings, then third finger plays seventh fret. Now here's where we put that sixth fret in there. And then go to your first finger, then three, two to three, to one. So remember we had our seven, eight, nine shape for a G chord. We have to adjust the third string, so now it's going to go eight, eight, nine. So you can quickly adapt all the chords that you know. Remember our open and closed positions? All of those positions work, but we have to adjust the third string up one fret. And it makes them feel and look very different. Now we get... It feels a lot closer to what we'll do in the key of open D tuning uses these sort of fingerings. So instead of four and five, it's going to be five and five for G. Instead of two and four, it's going to be three and four. Six and seven. Eight and nine. Ten and ten. Twelve and twelve. So you can get your... All those six shapes working really beautifully in this tuning. And so that's what we'll do in this next example, the sixth example. We're going to go from the tenth position, then walk our way down. And I like to do all these just using second and third finger. Really good use of the open and close shapes in this tuning. I didn't write in any slides there, but you can feel free to slide away. So things start to link together. The bounce you've learned down low, you can link with this motion going up and down the neck using the interval of the six, the open and close shape. Really great way to navigate through this tuning. Okay, one last time. I want to really work slowly through this one because it's such a nice sound. C, but or a D, kind of D sus sound. Passing chord over G, D7, G, moves up to another voice in a G. See, they work beautifully over the harmony. Uh, 
Mm. Okay, now the next example, we're going to not alternate bass uh, with on the D7 chord. We're going to let the sixth string ring and do this phrase. And this makes a really pretty chord. It's like that D7, instead of adding the third fret, we did that earlier on the third string, we're going to add the second fret. It's the D9 kind of sound. Earlier I told you to let go of that note. This case, in this case, it actually sounds really nice if you let it ring. Again. Last time. Hammer on. Hammer on. Then again. Wonderful variation there. Now the last one let's look at, there's a little bit of chromatic motion, and the melody on its own sounds like this. Again. That G is with the first fret of the third string. With the bass. fret with the second finger to fourth fret with the third finger. First finger moves down on the second string and slide pinky up. Pinky goes to first, then open strings, then back to your first finger. So slowly. So listen to some songs that uh, use this tuning. And Ray Khanna used it a lot. Sonny Chillingworth, uh, Ledra Kaapana uses this. Kiola Beamer has a wonderful album called Island Born. I'd highly recommend listening to that a lot. He plays often in C Wahine and F Wahine. On this album, he also plays in the G Wahine tuning on many, many songs. It's really beautiful. Uh, it's very common. There's a song that we'll look at uh, in a later series here. It's going to be called Shamarita Malasada. It's a Sonny Chillingworth song that I arranged for a solo piece, and it uses a syncopated bass. Now keep that in mind, that sort of bass line could work really well for a lot of these different gaps, like the second, or the one with the slide, the fourth one. It's got that syncopated bass that Sonny Chillingworth used a lot. see how that works really nicely with these vamps as well. So these are building blocks of uh, musical phrases that you can interpret, make variations of, and make your own over time and have a lot of fun with them. They're really great, good fun to play. So I'll see you again very soon and have fun practicing. Mahalo!